the Nazca Lines. Location and tour options for one of the world's greatest mysteries, the Nazca Lines, located in the desert plains of Peru. One of Peru's most sought-after travel destinations is located in the southern coastal valleys of Peru, about six hours from Lima. The small colonial-style town of Nazca is home to one of the world's greatest mysteries, the Nazca Lines. The lines are a series of enormous and peculiar ancient designs that were etched in the ground more than 2,000 years ago. The meaning of the lines are still unknown, but experts continue to come up with theories. These fascinating geoglyphs etched into the deserts of Peru offer more questions than answers. Spread across an incredible 50 miles of high and arid plateau rock, the Nazca lines consist of more than 800 scratched straight lines, 300 geometric figures, and some truly bewildering stylized animal and plant drawings. They are covered with ferruginous sand and gravel that acquired a dark patina from weathering. Scientists, mathematicians and archaeologists have been studying the purpose of the Nazca lines since the 1920s, but there isn't enough conclusive evidence to determine the exact significance of the lines. Theories have been made connecting their meaning to everything from textiles and agriculture to aliens and stars. The Nazca lines were created between 500 BC and 500 CE. It is believed that the majority were created by the ancient Nazca people, 900 to 200 BCE, hence the name, but it's been found that some lines predate even them. The etchings were discovered by Peruvian archaeologist Toribio Mejas Esp in 1927 who believed the lines to be part of an ancient sacred road system. It wasn't until decades after Esp's discovery that the Nazca lines were seen from an aerial view to reveal their immensity and symbolic shapes. This exploration was led by Paul Kozak, an American professor of Long Island University, who flew his small aircraft over the lines in 1940 to 1941. They are the most outstanding group of geoglyphs anywhere in the world, and are unmatched in its extent, magnitude, quantity, size, diversity and ancient tradition to any similar work in the world. The concentration and juxtaposition of the lines, as well as their cultural continuity, demonstrate that this was an important and long-lasting activity, lasting approximately 1,000 years. Intensive study of the geoglyphs and comparison with other manifestations of contemporary art forms suggests that they can be divided chronologically from the middle and late formative, 500 BC to 200 AD, to the regional development period, 200 to 500 AD, highlighting the Paracas phase, 400 to 200 BC, and the Nazca phase, 200 BC to 500 AD. There are two categories of glyphs. The first group is representational, depicting in schematic form a variety of natural forms including animals, birds, insects, and other living creatures and flowers, plants, and trees, deformed or fantastic figures and objects of everyday life. There are very few anthropomorphic figures. The second group comprises the lines, which are generally straight lines that crisscross certain parts of the pampas in all directions. Some are several kilometers in length and form designs of many different geometrical figures triangles, spirals, rectangles, wavy lines, etc. Others radiate from a central promontory or encircle it. Yet another group consists of so-called tracks, which appear to have been laid out to accommodate large numbers of people. The origin continues to be disputed, but the Nazca lines are thought to have been made by three different waves of pre-Inca cultures. The Paracas people, 
900 to 200 BC. The Nazca Civilization, 200 BC to AD 600. And the Huari, AD 630. As the name indicates, the majority of the lines are credited to the Nazca people. Some alternative theorists believe them to be created by extraterrestrials. Needless to say, the Nazca lines have kept archaeologists guessing for the past few decades. The sheer size and precision is mind-boggling. There are many differing theories about what the Nazca lines mean. One theory is that they were a way to be seen by deities and gods in the heavens. Another, by Professor Paul Kozak and archaeologist Maria Reich, declares the lines an astronomical observatory for solstices and other celestial events. Reich also believed that the shapes correlated to different constellations. Swiss historian Henry Stierlin believed them to have played a role in the fabrication of ancient textiles. There are even many people like author and ancient astronaut theorist Eric von Daniken, who believe that the line served as an alien landing strip. Currently, the most accepted theory, originally suggested by archaeologist Johann Reinhard, is the lines related to ritual practices for water. In a desert, water is a precious commodity and necessary for crops to grow and civilizations to thrive. Reinhard believed these were sacred paths leading to ceremonial sites where water deities can be worshipped. Hydrogeologist Stephen Maybe and archaeologist Donald Proulx hypothesize that the lines literally pointed to water sources and marked groundwater supplies. Though no one theory is accepted as fact, many conclude that the lines were perhaps multifunctional. It is possible that certain areas related to agriculture and water and other celestial observation and religious use. The authenticity of the lines and geoglyphs of Nazca and Pampas de Jumana is indisputable. The method of their formation, by removing the overlying weathered gravels to reveal the lighter bedrock, is such that their authenticity is assured. The creation, design, morphology, size and variety of the geoglyphs and lines correspond to the original designs produced during the historic evolution of the regions and have remained unchanged. The ideology, symbolism and sacred and ritual character of the geoglyphs and the landscape are clearly represented and their significance remains intact even today.